When I was in university, there was this guy in my Plato's Republic class who I will never forget. It's as if his purpose on this earth was to ruin any discussion as soon as it started. Anytime anyone made an intelligent, articulate point, he'd put up his hand and say, I agree with her, and then completely misstate what she had just said. I don't even think he knew he was doing it. I think he actually believed that the things he was saying equated to the things that she was saying. And it didn't stop the moment the bell rang. That guy is out there somewhere right now, misunderstanding you and later repeating it to somebody else in that misunderstanding. And he's probably the best symbol I can think of to explain why the Armenian pagan religion is having trouble holding back its Nazis. My wife's father is a Scientologist. Wow, that's an uncomfortable thing to say. Not just for me either, but for my wife and for you. Ugh. Anyone who follows this series can probably guess that I'm not on board with Scientology and neither is my wife. But while she's never actually taken part in it, family has a way of influencing you, even when you don't know you're being influenced. So when we got engaged, there was a period of deprogramming we went through that piece by piece deconstructed the lies she'd been fed in childhood. And while this video has nothing to do with Scientology, and while I don't believe my father-in-law is either a bad or unintelligent man, that experience taught me a great many things about how religion works. About how you start one. Because to help her understand the history of the cult her father had been sucked into, I invented a religion all my own, and started to get my friends on board as followers. It was essentially a joke, but within the comedy, meant as a real attempt to show how these sorts of things begin. Plus, I've always been sort of a prick. And here in Armenia, I'm interested to see that in 1991, another person had a very similar idea. Only instead of trying to divide a family as I was doing, they were trying to unite one. The religion they invented, or should I say reinvented, was meant to give the Armenian people a unified, endemic, national religion. Not so much a replacement of the orthodoxy as a supplement. Many of its adherents, including the man whose writings it was based off of, were devout Christians. They saw no issue with being adherents of both. But despite both being called religions, their purposes weren't actually at odds. Most of the time, they walked in lockstep. They call it the Armenian native faith, although for the sake of brevity, I'm going to equally referring to it as paganism. They also call it heathenism, but I feel like there's connotations to that that don't translate very well. The origins of the faith go back to a man we've mentioned before in our Armenia episodes, Garigan Nejda. He's one of, if not the, most important names in the modern history of this country. But he's a complicated figure. He fought with the Nazis and truly believed in the idea of Armenian racial purity. Modern paganism in Armenia branches directly from the roots that he planted a hundred years ago, as do much of the politics of this country. Only, it's not that simple. Because, well, yes, he fought with the Nazis, and yes, he supported a national political religion that was meant to highlight and promote the purity of the Armenian people, it would be incorrect to say that he was a true supporter of Hitler, or that he had any animosity against non-Armenians for their lack of connection to the bloodline. His beliefs grew out of a genocide so brutal that for a time it looked like it might wipe out his people completely. His words of unity were a call to people who had no country of their own and were being slaughtered wholesale by their imperial masters. It was less about their racial superiority and more about their survival. He was trying to draw in a diaspora that had up until that point little cause to find themselves united. His writings were meant to build back a historic people, and in the mind of most modern Armenians, it worked. In 1991, with Armenia in the midst of a war with Azerbaijan that again endangered their national existence, an Armenian-American by the name of Slak Kakosian decided that he was going to update Nezhde's works. Building off the principles of the racially-based religious nationalism of his predecessor, he began to codify the laws and beliefs of Armenian paganism. They hold services at the pre-Christian temple of Garni, the last standing Greco-Roman building in not just the nation, but the entire former Soviet Union. And I can see why. It's an absolutely beautiful building, and serves as a very clear example of Armenia's long and storied connection to these lands. For a society that has been forced to reject orthodoxy in the face of Soviet atheism, for many people this temple and this religion were able to fill the gaps left behind. But the religion from the beginning was pretty heavily wrapped up in politics. After all, it was an attempt to create a nation out of little more than an idea. Even though on paper it has no political leanings, in practice it's pretty heavily associated with the nationalist right. And given their espoused beliefs, it's not all too surprising to find that most of the members of the leading right-wing party of Armenia are believers of the native Armenian faith. 
Which brings me to my point, now two-thirds of the way through the episode. Because a ball pushed by nationalists tends to roll down a very ugly hill whenever it's not meticulously kept in line. Despite many other positive and non-controversial beliefs, it's undeniable that the Armenian native faith relies on the principles of racial identity, hypernationalism, and the Aryan purity of the local people. On top of that, despite it being little more than a way to hold back the Soviets, their ideological founder fought with Hitler. You can probably see where I'm going with this. Since the beginning, it has been very hard for them to stop the neo-Nazis from completely taking over their religion. It would be inaccurate to say that paganism in this country is supportive of Nazism. It would be inaccurate to say that the founders of the faith did so as a means of targeting minorities, invading other lands, or harming those who disagreed with them. Considering the massive diaspora of Armenian people around the globe who have intermarried and mixed with ethnicities of all types, it would also be inaccurate to say that their true aim was any sort of blood-based racial purity. They just want a national religion. They want Armenian people from all around the globe to feel united. But just because that was their stated aim doesn't mean that that's what happened in practice. Just like in that Plato's Republic class all those years ago, at some point it was inevitable that somebody was going to put up their hand and say, you're right, we are Nazis. Within a few short decades, the paganism of this country had an undeniable neo-Nazi problem. Most of the practitioners disagreed, the head priest disagreed, and yet it was still there. Bit by bit, a religion already considered somewhat extreme by the general population found itself being taken over by people they themselves considered extreme. In the late 2000s, things came to a head. With the founder of the religion recently dead and no high priest put in his place, an internal uprising began to put a neo-Nazi on his spiritual throne. In direct response to an attempt from within to guide the religion further right, the pagans of the native faith attempted to exercise their demons. They cut ties with the most extreme elements, in effect raising their own hand to rebut the words that were being put in their mouths. And out of this, the Armenian Aryan Order was born. It exists today like a distorted mirror, shining back to its counterparts the lessons of stopping that ball in its tracks. They know full well that if their experiment is taken over by its most extreme elements, it will never be able to unite the people in the way it was always intended. Ideology isn't static. Ideas are rarely perfectly reflected back, especially when they contain an extreme amount of nuance. Nationalism certainly has its place in this world. The right wing has its place in this world. But if you are one of those two things, it is very much so in your best interest to keep an eye on that ball. Because the moment that hand goes shooting up in the air to reframe your point, if you're not there to correct it, they're speaking for you. Neo-Nazis will rise on your back, whether that's what you intended or not. This is Rare Earth, and this is a peach. Are you filming? Yes! I didn't touch it. <laughs>